Yes, this is John G. Sutton. Welcome to Tales from the Jails. I want to talk a little bit today about the time I spent at HM Prison Wormwood Scrubs and some particular incidents, one specifically in which uh, a member of staff decided to assault young inmates. Now, at Wormwood Scrubs in 1975-76, there happened to be a postal allocation unit inside the prison and a young offenders unit inside the prison. And working in the young offenders postal allocation centre was a certain officer who managed to get himself in the position of being in charge of maintaining the... Uh, the cleanliness of the wing, shall we say. He was in charge of all the cleaning parties. So he used to take uh, young inmates, young Boston boys, out of their cells and take them round the, round the perimeter and get them to clean up all, all the dung parcels that had been thrown out, the ship parcels, all the rubbish that was all over the place, put them in the back, take them to the to the tip the bins in the in the main prison and get rid of them and basically keep the landings and the wing clean uh, and uh, one day I was working on I was working on C wing and I was on C1 landing and we got an alarm call so we, oh, the staff ran to the main unit they said right get yourself over to uh, to B wing which was the postal allocation unit uh, there's there's a there's trouble there and they need staff from another wing to deal with this. So about four of us, I think it was, we ran over as fast as we could, and we we got into uh, into B wing, and they said uh, it's it's in the uh, in the in the wing cleaning unit. You know they had like a section of cells knocked together that contained all the cleaning equipment. You know the buckets, the uh, the brushes, and all that, and all the disinfectants and everything that was used to clean the thing. And uh, I, said, I said, well, what, what's the problem? I said, uh, it, it's, uh, his name was, I won't give you his full name, because obviously he may still be around and this would be deeply embarrassing. Uh, and uh, I'll just tell you what, how we, we knew him as Windy, yeah? I said, uh, Windy's barricaded himself into the, uh, into the, into the cleaning cupboards, and he's got, I think it was two Borstal boys, might have three Borstal boys in there with him. And I said, what's all this about? <laughs> you know, he says, he's in there, he won't come out. He's locked, barricaded himself in. So, basically, this guy had completely and utterly lost the plot. Now, I knew who Windy was. Because I'd seen him a couple of times on my way home from work at 9 o'clock, 9.15 at night as I was walking back to my accommodation underneath uh, the North Circular Road. There's a tunnel underneath North Circular Road, you know, a, a pedestrian way. And I'd seen him one night and he was under there and he had a packet of Benson and Hedges cigarettes in his hand. And he was holding these cigarettes up to his ear like that. And he's talking into them. 10-4, 10-4, yes. Oh, I'm receiving you, I'm receiving you, yes. And I, and I, I looked, at it. as I was walking past, I recognised him, you see. And uh, he must have recognised me because I didn't go home in uniform. I went home with a, a, believe it or not, a big old camouflage jacket that I had from the army days. And uh, I walked past and said, are you all right, Wendy? Uh, down, just a minute. Oh, yeah, I am all right. You know, all nonsense like that. So he's obviously uh, not a full bob, you know, a, a sandwich short of a picnic, shall we say? And uh, there he was when I got into B wing with the, with the other staff. He barricaded himself into this unit with with a couple of Borstal boys. Now, quite what he was doing to the Borstal boys, you know. We were on the other side of the door. We, we couldn't exactly find out. So it was decided that we'd get the works department to come and jack the door off. What they did was they had a like a pneumatic thing that they planted into the 
brickwork of the door of the door frame and a and it surprised the door off its hinges. So we're banging on the door, shouting at Wendy, you, Wendy, open the door, or we're going to jack the door off. And if we come in, we're going to drag you out, which we would have had to do, you know. By this time, it's getting obvious that this is a serious offence. I mean, who knows what this man, where he's going to go with these Boastel boys. And the Boastel boys were probably... 15, 16 years of age, only young men, you know, little boys, really, when you look at it that way. And, and there we've got uh, an adult, uh, quite a big adult male jailer who's trapped them in the cell with them, and he very well could have been interfering with them. We didn't know. All we knew was he was in there, and we had to get him out. So anyway, I, I personally banged on the door, and he knew my voice because he'd heard me before, in fact, not too many nights before when he was talking to the packet of cigarettes. And uh, so I banged on the door and said, Wendy, get him out there. Come on, open the door, lad. So otherwise, we're coming in. I said, we come in, we're going to grab you. So eventually, it took about, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes, something like that. He decided he would open the door. And uh, the door, we snatched him out, you know, got, got him out of there and uh, whisked him out. They got, a, they got an ambulance, yeah. And they put him in the ambulance and took him took him away to uh, for psychiatric uh, assessment, I believe. You know, he, he wasn't charged as far as I know, but he was taken off to a psychiatric unit. And uh, I never saw him again. I never saw Wendy again after that. Never. The two Boastel boys were absolutely terrified. And I believe that when they were subsequently interviewed by members of senior members of the staff it transpired that Wendy had in actual fact been interfering with them sexually interfering with them and that he decided that he was going on a on a spree with these two boys or there were only two of them yeah uh, of these two boys and uh, why he would do such a thing I mean obviously deranged you know anybody who'd stand around under in a underground uh, walkway talking to cigarettes is sincerely suspect. When I reflect upon that, it would have perhaps been a good idea to make a report, but in places like the Scrubs and Strange Ways, they weren't interested. So basically, that's one of the, one of the strange stories from Wormwood Scrubs. Now, I'm sure that, uh, you know, if your son was sent to prison you know you would like to think that they will be safe and that's my argument ordinary people these are ordinary people who can make mistakes anybody can make mistakes but I've been in more more punch-ups yeah uh, than most people I know seriously and uh, quite easily quite easily I could have injured somebody and found myself in that position as well. I wouldn't go out looking for trouble, but if it found me, which it had the way of doing, you know, yeah, then I would deal with it. Anyway, these boys, 15, 16 years old, some mother's sons in prison, expect them. I mean, you'd expect that all they had to be doing was being locked up, go to the postal, postal unit, do their whatever they've got to do, six to eight months, nine months, whatever it was, back out into society. And here they were being violated by one of the members of staff in the prison system. And that is a page from history, from Her Majesty's Prison, Wormwood Scrubs. This has been Tales from the Jails. My name's John G. Sutton. Now you can read this in my book. Psychic Screw. You get it on Amazon. I hope you've enjoyed this little encounter with the past. Thank you.